got something a little bit special for you today. So, back in the, well, mid-90s, a lot of games were released in Japan and never actually made it to Western Shores. So, in more recent years, we've had a huge amount of, you know, fan projects and translation things to bring these to an English audience. For example, this game here, Bahamut Lagoon, I think I'm pronouncing that right, which, as you can see, this is the only version that was released commercially, the uh, Japanese one. And of course, if I was to put this into my Super Famicom, it would display in Japanese, and because it's an RPG, I would not be able to play it at all. It would com be completely impenetrable, uh, for me, that is. But, um, if I wanted to, I could download the fan translation, I could pop it into my emulator of choice, and there we go, I could play Bahamut Lagoon. And until recently, that was kind of the only way to experience games like this. Uh, in, in English, or in other languages, because, you know, it doesn't, <laughs> it's not only English that exists in the world. Um, if you wanted to play it on an actual, on, on real hardware, on a real telly, you were kind of out of luck. Obviously, you've got the likes of flashcards, the SD to SNES, and FX Pack Pro, I think, is the, the current one, which make these things a little bit easier, and, of course, the things like the Mister. But you're still not quite getting the, you know, the feel of getting your cartridge out of the box, putting it into your SNES, and uh, there you go, which some people, you know, do appreciate, myself included. I'm not saying it's the only way to play, absolutely not, but it is something that you can't quite do with some of these games. Until relatively recently. And, you know, in recent years there have been some efforts to bring these to a Western audience, you know, far beyond the SNES's lifespan, but Retro's in these days, so it makes sense. And, um... Well, the, the one I've got a hold of, I'm not going to say it's recent because I've had this sat around for a while, but uh, here we have Undercover Cops, which, again, was released in the SNES in Japan and then, as far as I'm aware, didn't make it beyond that. So this was originally an arcade game by IREM, um, the predecessors to... Well, predecessors? More like uh, the best bits of SNK, I think. Uh, what else did Hiram do famously? I think did they do um, Salamander, or one of them? Ah, uh, did they do our type? I can't remember. I've no idea. Somebody tell me, um, because you know I don't know anything. And as you can see, this is the EU version. It also came in a North American version. I don't actually think they released a Japanese version. I just want to uh, flip this over so we can see that it's from Retrobit who are purveyors of modern retro stuff. They're perhaps best known for their controllers, the Tribute 64 being maybe the most famous example, which is their sort of... It's kind of a remake of the Horian 64 controller that was very well uh, very well regarded back in the day. Uh, so, yeah, this is Undercover Cops. It's got a nice shiny uh, title, as you can see, if I shine a light on it, with very, the very obvious lights that I've got in here. Um, and it says here, cartridge not working on your pal SNES. Press reset twice while the power is on. Now, I got the EU version, and if you are, if you know anything about the SNES and about consoles of the time, you'll know that it was perhaps not the best choice to purchase the EU version when, in 99% of cases, NTSC, like North American and Japanese versions of the games, are remarkably better. Better frame rates, they're more suited to the um, you know, the NTSC standard, all that sort of thing. I actually uh, made a point of asking them about Twitter, on, there, asking them about this on Twitter. <clears throat> and they said, you know, it doesn't matter, it's, it's the same game, no matter which one you buy. And indeed, if you look on the back, uh, I do believe that that is correct, because it says, for use with SNES, NA slash EU consoles. Only thing is, this EU thing is a sticker. The only, the other other thing, I mean, I do have two systems that can run this, but I only have one SNES, and that is my Super Famicom. And that's the reason why I bought the EU one because it was fit, it will fit in a Super Famicom. And I specifically said to them, "Will this work in a Super Famicom?" And they said, "Yes, it will." 
and at full speed. So we'll put them to task on that. Anyway, um, moving on, let's just have a quick look around the box, as is our want. Undercover cops. Uh, that one's printed upside down, that's very poor. And retro bit on the bottom there. And on the back, it's 2043. Actually not that far in the future. <laughs> it's quite troubling, that, isn't it? One day this game will be set in the past. That was a pointless statement, wasn't it? And crime has taken over the city in this post-apocalyptic world. It's so post-apocalyptic that football still exists, apparently. Anyway. The mayor appoints the city sweepers to take out the villains. <laughs> Which villains are these? And now it's up to you to choose between Zan Takahara. Oh, that's a name. Matt Gables or Rosa Felmond. Oh, boy. Uh, I apologise if, if this is out of focus. That's just the way it is. And fight against strange creatures. Good God. To find out what the Marenko Corporation is up to. Um, fight your way past five bosses and multiple mutated enemies until you meet Dr. Crayborn. Who's that? Himself. Beat him to prevent his plan to bomb the city and bring safety to New York. Okay. Apparently we're in New York. Good. Fail and not only will the city be destroyed, but your licenses will be revoked. <laughs> oh, beautiful. That is... <laughs> Absolutely stunning. Also, something that puzzles me is that the artwork on the back is in a significantly, like, noticeably different style to the one on the front. This, the front reminds me a bit more of, like, Dragon Ball Z, somehow, and that reminds me a little bit more of, like, the Fist of the North Star. However, I'm not a manga or anime aficionado, so... Again, you can... I'm happy for you to tell me that I'm totally wrong in the comments. <laughs> Nevertheless, my limited knowledge is what leads me to this conclusion. Anyway, we've got a barcode. Actually, I'd just like to point out that all these stickers um, are stuck on the outside of the shrink wrap. This is indeed shrink wrapped. And you know what we do with shrink wrap on this channel. Um, so, I don't know. I have a, I have a bit of a thing about stickers. Because if, if it came with the game brand new, then I kind of like to keep them around. You know, it feels like part of the package, but if they're stuck to the, the, you know, the wrap, it's a bit difficult to do that, isn't it? Anyway, I'll worry about that. Um, let's just get this darn thing open. So, do we have, do we have a point of incision? Do we have somewhere we can go in easily? I think there is a good spot. Come on, let's be careful about this. I know this is a repro, but it's still a game and we don't want to destroy it. And yes, of course, it is officially licensed. Um, retro bit are quite legit. It's not like those Retro Game Lab repro boxes that I got that time that were... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that none of the money spent on those went back to the original developers of the things that they put on a disc and sold, but there you go. It's uh, unfortunately the way of it sometimes. Ooh. That's torn weirdly. What's happened there? Oh well, <laughs> shan't complain, it's to this... Yeah, that's really strange, I don't know if you can tell, but there's like two layers. There's a layer there, but that's not broken, so... I'm, I'm confused. I'm confused by the shrink wrap. Let's be careful not to um, destroy the stickers in this process as well. Because like I say, I do feel like they are part of the package. There we go. Uh, and there we are. I unfortunately don't have any um, European SNES games to compare this against. Gosh, there's still some shrink wrap stuck to my finger. Get away. No. Be gone. Be... There we are. I do have a Japanese one. Oops. And, uh, well, it doesn't look the same. And of course it doesn't because, you know, this ain't a Japanese game. The closest thing I have is my Super Turrican box, which came with the Super NT. Yeah, it's it's about the same size, which would stand to reason. It's a little bit squatter, but... <laughs> this is a pointless comparison, isn't it? Because this ain't a PC game. SNES games are all the same size, so... I don't know. I don't know which one is more accurate. I imagine this one's probably the most accurate, given that it's actually a game, and that one's just a box. Anyway, enough faffing. Let's 
Let's see if we can get this open in one piece. Gosh, it's like the worst PC big boxes where you have to undo the flap. That's the trouble. Um, these boxes, I, mean, I guess video game packaging in general is meant to be kind of throwaway. So, they weren't expecting people to be super careful with them, I guess. Right, what have we got inside then? Oh, look at that! That is a nice cartridge. Funny thing is, <laughs> I ordered this and I completely forgot that I'd ordered it. It just kind of arrived one day and I was like, oh, what's this? And, yep, it turned out to be Undercover Cops. And I remember getting an email and thinking, uh, I got an email saying, oh, it's on its, uh, we're nearly run out of these, pre-order now before it's too late and whatever. And I thought to myself, you know, I really, I would really like that, but I probably can't, <laughs> can't afford it. Turns out I'd already ordered it, so it was not a problem. So let's have a look at what else we've got. In the package we've got a, what appears to be a poster of sorts. Ooh, comics. Was this a comic as well? God, I really need to do my research before these things. I guess it makes it a bit more entertaining if I don't. That's, uh, I mean, it's a nice poster. However, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it's quite low res. Quite significantly low res. Welcome. Yes. It hasn't been upscaled or anything. It's just, well, it, I guess it has by virtue of it being bigger, but you know what I mean. It's not been properly upscaled. Kind of a shame. Uh, on the other hand, oh gosh, this one's even worse. Oh no. That's pretty bad. Can you tell? You can sort of tell, yeah. That's not video artifacting. That is what it looks like to the naked eye, I'm afraid. That's not, that's that's a shame that, isn't it? You'd think they would have been able to get hold of the original um, full resolution artwork for that. Or maybe that is full resolution. <laughs> maybe it was just drawn really tiny originally. <laughs> that's the best they could do. Oh dear. Well, that is a shame. It's not the end of the world though, because the thing is, I do, I do appreciate a nice poster packaged with my games, but I'm not gonna put them up. Just because, for me, it's part of the, part of the game, not, um, I don't want it ruined by blue tack, basically. I know I could frame it, but it's all folded up, and I don't know. I don't know. I like them, but I wouldn't display them. I'd have to iron them, I'd have to faff about. It's not worth it. And then it's, it still belongs in the box to me. So, we have a full colour instruction manual. That's amazing. It tells you all the moves. I probably should have mentioned by this point that it is a... Brawler, you know, the, the scrolling beat em up type game. I think Streets of Rage or Final Fight. Very popular in the arcades at the time. Um, and I'm not actually sure if the arcade version ever made it outside Japan. That'd be interesting to find out. Again, could have done with researching that beforehand, but whatever. That would be going against the MO of the channel, I suppose. Uh, I threw away my past. All I have left is to fight until I die. My only goal now is to use my abilities and destroy evil wherever it lurks. Yes, Zan. Um, <laughs> I have to question, like, none of them look like cops. And I realise they're undercover, but none of them look like they're undercover either. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do we have uh, proper images of the rest of them? I mean, one of them is dressed like a, an American footballer. There he is, look. He looks like the guy from... Um, what's the guy called from King of Fighters? Yeah, him. Um, oh, he was a pro football player. Uh, oh no, they accused him of doping, so they let him onto the force instead. <laughs> okay, sure. And then her outfit is totally different there to his there. That's kind of funny. Well, there we go. My partner and boyfriend. Oh my goodness. Kidnapped her. Poor lass. So they've all got different reasons for doing this, I guess. Anyway, that's uh, that's the that's the uh, manual, and it comes in English and Japanese. Quite a beefy uh, little volume, that. I like it a lot. And um, 
I mean, if you look closely, there is a bit of artefacting on the print, but it's not as noticeable on this. Cause, probably because it's not as uh, as big. And uh, here we are. This is the game itself in a little cellophane bag. So much plastic. I don't think we needed this. Out it comes. And yes, unlike every other SNES cartridge ever. In fact, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's that's accurate. At least I don't know of any uh, translucent orange SNES games. Not that they were released in the original um, SNES's lifetime. Possibly there's been some others. Um, after the fact, there it is, Undercover Cops. It's Iron Brew flavoured, and it's got a chicken on the back. Yes. Do not turn the power switch on and off rapidly. Do not touch the edge connector with your fingers. Do not clean with benzene, a thinner, alcohol or other such solvents. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I may have cleaned one or two of my um, actual SNES cartridges with a little bit of IPA, but they worked afterwards, so, you know. I, I, yeah, whatever. <laughs> They'll be fine. They'll be fine, I'm sure. Right. Well... We've seen the old packaging and we've seen what's inside. Shall we see if it works on a SNES? Or rather on an SFC? Let's go find out. Well, as you can see, it seems to work pretty well. Um, let's turn it down a little bit. Yeah, um, I haven't actually played it yet, so let's just give it a quick bash. Just to remove any doubt, and yes, this is on a Super Famicom. It is, honest look. Here's the controller. Look at the best sweepers. Bop. Uh, come on. Game, yes. I would like a game, please. And as you can see, I don't know if you spotted the copyright stuff at the bottom there, but it was 2020, it did say. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? Here they come. So like I say, this was originally Japanese only and this is an officially licensed and officially made fan translation. There does exist a fa uh, sorry, not an official fan translation. Um, what I mean is, there is, there exists a fan translation um, already for this game, but this is a new, this is a new translation made with the help of IREM. I don't actually know any of the moves, other than just tap Y and hope for the best. But yeah, it works. Uh, works pretty well, doesn't it? On my, uh, I'm I'm guessing. Yeah, as long as the game fits in your console, it'll work. I did test it with my Super NT as well, and it was fine. I'd just like to point out though that remember that sticker that was on the. Um, the box that said if it doesn't work straight away on your palace nest you might have to press reset a couple of times yes it applied here as well I'm not sure what the deal is but th yeah if you do have this and you find that it doesn't run because I um, when I first put this in it wouldn't work and it just came up with a black screen if you find that that happens Press reset a few times, and eventually, it'll get going. Also, everybody in this game is so hench, look at her. Just, just carrying around that, that stone pillar as if it's nothing. Smack. Smack. Who needs knives, eh? Have it. Also, she, uh, she attacked with her butt. Oh dear. Oh. Dear, oh dear. Well, anyway, you get you get the get the um, get the concept, don't you? It's undercover cops, um, and just as a a little oh goodness, I'm getting my ass handed to me. Well, there we go. Just as a little aside, let's just have a quick look at the arcade version. I'll put some footage in here, and you can see how it compares because it's always interesting, isn't it? Hopefully, I think, if I recall, it's been a it's been a, quite a while since I last played the arcade version, but um, I'm I'm pretty convinced that it is quite a faithful adaptation. <sighs> I may be 
I'm, uh, does this have multiplayer? I'm going to try and find out if it has multiplayer. I have two controllers. Uh, just press start on there. No, I don't think it does, and I think that was one of the concessions they had to make on the SNES. Um, it says that on the site when you buy it, or if you can still buy it. I think um, I think it is still available. Depending on where you look, you'll have to go scouring for it. But if you look at the retro bit um, site and look at the resellers, then uh, then you'll get a you'll you'll get a few options for where to potentially buy this from from retro bits, various storefronts and stuff. I think they're mostly on Amazon, uh, worryingly enough. But there are a few different places in Europe you can buy it from as well. I bought my copy from Strictly Limited, though I don't know if they're still running it. Worth a look. Oh. You'll notice that I'm barely doing any damage to this, but I'll just play until until I've beaten this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all impressed. Yeah, check this out. Somebody's seen in movies. Hey! No, 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 no. You're not doing that to me. Here we go. Bosh! And there we go. So. I, uh... I have no complaints. It's, uh... <laughs> I mean, I don't know what, what I can really add. It's a SNES game. It works on a SNES. It's... It is what it is. One thing that does, pardon me, one thing that does concern me though, it may just be the way that the game is made and the way it's supposed to be, and maybe I'll have to verify this afterwards. There are black bars at the top and bottom. When the game, when, when it gets into the level, you'll be able to see it properly. Yeah, look, black bars. And I don't, I don't recall if my other games do that, but it's just something to note. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm convinced that it's running at full speed. So and there's nothing, there's nothing um, that says otherwise. Really, I think it might just be because it's playing on a on a UK telly, and that's just the way it is. But I don't have that with other games, so I don't know if it's just this game or what. Anyway, I'll shut up now because I'm just rambling. So that's Undercover Cops on the SNES. If you like it, go and pick up a copy if you can. Um, makes a fine, a fine addition to any SNES library. Let's set some people on fire before we finish. Also, before before I go, snails. Give you health. Good, uh, good advice for life. That. Bye.